Hey everybody, this is John Fenn, Church Without Walls International, making an unusual video today. Some of you have been wishing our son Chris a happy birthday, which is tomorrow, and I want to give you an update on him on a personal level. Uh, for those of you who don't know, uh, Barb and I have three boys. Our oldest son was born with the umbilical cord around his neck in a slipknot, and he is uh, basically a mental four-year-old, although he takes things in at a higher level, but as far as communication and where he is mentally, it's about four or five years old. And he's been in a group home uh, for the last 16 or 17 years. He's in a wheelchair. He was at home for the first 24 years of his life. When his little brothers grew up and went off to college and everything, uh, it became apparent that we couldn't take care of him all by himself. And so we put him in a group home. Then we moved to be within about a half an hour of that group home. Uh, it's Home of Hope in Venita, Oklahoma. And uh, so Chris has been there. We normally, typically, uh, Chris will come home on Friday and I'll take him back on a Saturday. He'll spend Friday night with us. Uh, the plans for over Christmas is to pick him up tomorrow. He's 41 years old tomorrow on December 23rd. And uh, he loves, of course, his birthday and Christmas. And uh, so we're going to have him three nights for, for Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and then take him back on Saturday. And just received a call from Home of Hope, handed down from the state of Oklahoma, that any resident of a long-term care facility, such as Home of Hope in Venita, upon return from Christmas visit, will be locked in their bedroom 14 days, 24 hours a day for 14 days straight, quarantined in case they came across anybody who might possibly have been exposed to the coronavirus. Not, be, not if they exhibit symptoms, not if their temperature is, uh, is up or if they are having a cough, but just assuming the worst upon return from a, a home visit over Christmas holidays, that they will be locked in their bedroom 14 days, all eating, drinking, bed, bath, everything, recreation, everything, 24 hours a day for 14 days straight. No testing going on. Even if there was testing, they'd still have to be locked in there, even with a negative uh, result if they even tested. But no testing is planned. Just 14 days, you're locked in there. Can you imagine locking a four-year-old in their bedroom to eat, drink, go to the bathroom, sleep, have any form of recreation uh, in their room with no contact from anyone else except one person who comes in and out to administer, you know, medicine, food, whatever the case is. That's what they're subjecting these people to. This is statewide in the state of Oklahoma. I, our son just happens to be part of Home of Hope uh, in, in Venita. Uh, you know, right now, <laughs> it, it, to, to hand this down now, two days before Christmas Eve, uh, knowing that you know, the Home of Hope has, what, 275 clients spread out between uh, Claremore to Miami, Oklahoma, to Venita, to Jay, Oklahoma, all over Northeast Oklahoma. 275 or so clients. The lady who contacted us had 31 people on her list, parents and guardians, who get the same phone call saying, hey, you're welcome to take your loved one home for the holiday. However, upon return, we're going to lock that, that mental child, that emotional child, in their bedroom for two weeks. Uh, and this is malicious from the state of Oklahoma. This is the, this is the survey uh, department that does the home surveys. And, you know, this is just like something out of a horror story that the officials would, not based on science, not based on any evidence, assuming the worst, uh, lock these, in my case, in my son's case, four-year-old in his bedroom for 14 days. The solution is we can't have him home for his birthday. We can't have him home for Christmas. Uh, we'll pile up his, his presents and, and take them to him. He's not going to understand why he can't come home with mom and dad, but he is he's a trooper. He will make the best of it. He will have a good attitude because he's Chris. But this is not just for the holidays. This is coming down from, from here on with no end in sight that any home visit, then that person will be quarantined for 14 days. What I, I hope to find an attorney who would challenge that because I don't see any legal mandate. My son has the same constitutional rights I do for the freedom of travel, the freedom of assembly. And quarantine is for sick people. It's not for healthy people. And so I cannot find a, a moral or legal basis in which they are allowed to, to commit cruelty to an emotional, mental four-year-old by locking them in their room for two weeks straight, 24 hours a day. How is that immoral policy not contrary to the constitutional rights that he has? No matter his mental ability or the fact that he's in a wheelchair, this violates, in my view, the Americans for Disabilities Act. It violates his constitutional rights, the freedom of travel and movement. Uh, they're healthy. They're healthy. Uh, there's no testing involved. It's just lock them up 
and throw away the key for 14 days. It's cruel, and it's especially cruel and malicious that it comes now two days before Christmas. So that's the update for us. If you guys could pray for us, if anybody knows a constitutional lawyer in the state of Oklahoma willing to uh, to do this or to put it out there in the in the airwaves, because there are there's got to be hundreds, if not thousands, of people, of parents and guardians across. Uh, the state of Oklahoma, where as far as they know, all nine divisions of long-term care facility are affected by this. And it's an open-ended command. Uh, you, you're welcome to have them home, but they'll be locked up when they get back. So basically that means we won't be seeing our son uh, ever for the, the time being until the state changes its mandate. And folks, if the numbers of COVID were way up for our county, or the counties surrounding the area, I, I might find some science in that. It's not, it's actually holding steady or going down in terms of the number of cases, the number of deaths, et cetera. So anyway, just, you can pray for us. I'll be on tomorrow for my normal Wednesday, uh, uh, Facebook and YouTube live uh, videos, but that's a family update from the Fenn family. You could pray for us. Our long-term solution, of course, is to start a home, a private home, so it's not subjected to some of the same uh, mandates and uh, or to, to have the help where we could care for Chris at home full time. Uh, that would take a ton of money <laughs> that we just don't have. And I'm not soliciting that. Don't misunderstand me. I'm just saying that's a, the obvious solution is to take him out of that situation so that he can be with family and, and friends and not have to face uh, something so asinine as as this mandate. So anyway, thanks for the uh, thanks for watching. Uh, pray for the state of Oklahoma and all of these loved ones, these, parents, these children and the parents who suddenly get the phone call two days before Christmas Eve. You're welcome to take your loved one home, but upon return, we're going to lock them in their room for 14 days, 24 hours a day. For our son, Chris, he would go, he would go nuts. He would break windows. He'd break his, his dresser. He would, he would be, the, the time he tried to get out of his room and they had the door locked and there's no one in there, no, no, no contact with any human except for food and, and, uh, you know, clothing needs or, or whatever, medicine or whatever, his life is in danger. How could they do that? It's, it's amazing the, the mentality of mindless bureaucrats um, out there and they assume the worst. So how about assuming the best, trusting the parents who raise their loved ones and have just delegated the authority temporarily to Home of Hope of Vanita in this case uh, to, to mutually care for our child and why not bring the, the families in on it and be part of the solution? All right, that's the update. Talk to you later. Thank you for your prayers. Thank you for your concern.